from heaven, and I pray you're enjoying this brand new teaching program. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, the Lord said, and ye shall be my witnesses. The power of God will be in your life the moment his presence is there. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses. The presence of the Holy Spirit brings us power. The moment the presence of God is in your life, there will be power. Now, when we talk about the presence of God, as I discussed yesterday, we're talking about the person of the Lord. We're talking about the glory of the Lord. We're talking about the attributes of the Lord. Remember that when Moses in Exodus 33, 18 said, show me thy glory, in Exodus 34, 5, God revealed his attributes himself. Now, the moment uh, the presence of God is there, yesterday I showed you that a number of things will happen. Number one, you will lose sight of self. Exodus 34, 29 says, And Moses wished not. He did not know that his face was shining. He lost sight of himself when the presence of God came upon him. In 2 Corinthians 3.17 we read, the presence of God transforms us into the image of Christ Jesus. That blessed presence brings transformation. And thirdly, the Bible says in Psalm 42 verse 7 that the presence of God, once it flows upon our life, verse 8 now says, God will command His blessings. The blessings of God will be poured upon your soul and your life because of God's presence. Psalm 91 verse 1 declares, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When the presence of God is there, there will be protection and so much more. Now, when does the presence of God come? The presence of God comes according to Isaiah 26. Turn with me to Isaiah 26. We're going to look at verse 8 and verse 9. Isaiah 26, the scripture says this. Here's when God's presence will come. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So when does God's presence come? When we seek him with all our heart. For the Bible says, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Verse 9 says, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee. And the Lord tells us clearly in Jeremiah 29 that when we seek him, we will find him. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 29 and look with me at this most powerful and most important portion of God's blessed word. Verse 13 and 14, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And the result is deliverance from bondage and captivity. Now, the presence of God comes when we seek Him. And the moment you seek the Lord and find His presence, the Bible says that will produce silence. And on this program, I want to teach on that. We hear very little about silence. Turn to Psalm 46 and verse 10, and we'll see what silence is really all about. When I say silence, I do, I do not mean quietness as we know it in the natural realm. Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know. Be still and know. It is impossible to know the Lord without that stillness in the heart. 
Be still and know I am God. The knowledge of God will come when there is that blessed silence and stillness that is produced by the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord produces holy silence and stillness. The word has much to say about that. But please write this down. Silence is not the result of lack. It is the result of abundance. When the presence of God fills your life, there will be abundance. And the result of that abundance will be silence. When you get into the presence of God and His precious presence begins to fill your heart, what happens? You can't talk. You cannot say a thing. Why? Because now the presence of God has saturated your being. Therefore, the presence of God does not stir you. The presence of God stills you. I want to say it again. The presence of God does not stir the soul. The presence of God stills the soul. That's something extremely important. And the fullness of God's presence results in silence, holy silence. I like to call it holy silence. The presence of God, once it fills your heart with that abundance of God's presence, now there's holy silence. The scripture says in Zephaniah 1.7, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. Here we find something most amazing. The presence of God stills us. Hold thy peace at the presence of God. God's presence does not stir the soul. God's presence stills it. I got to say that so important. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. And now look what it says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. Habakkuk 2:20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Why does God command that? Why is the Lord saying, let all the earth be silent? Because he wants to reveal himself to his people. He wants to reveal himself to the world. Because in silence, God is able to reveal himself. Remember what happened to Elijah the prophet. When that still small voice came, only then did God reveal his plan and himself to Elijah the prophet. Go with me to Zechariah. Zechariah here, chapter 2, verse 13. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. God again commands, be silent, all flesh before the Lord. Why? Because God wants to reveal himself. Now, the word of God has much to say about this. When there is silence, we will hear the voice of the Lord. That is found in Job. Turn to the book of Job. Look at chapter 4, verse 16. Job 4, 16. For the Lord's word declares... When there is silence, the voice of the Lord is heard. And how little we hear his voice today, how we need to hear his voice. The word of God says in that last portion of verse 16, there was silence and I heard a voice saying. There was silence and then I heard the voice. Silence brings us into that place where we can hear the voice of the Lord. Now, God's word has much more to say to us. In the book of Isaiah, there's an amazing scripture. Will you turn to Isaiah 57 with me for a moment? Isaiah 57 and verse 10. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. How worn we get, how tired we get when we're doing it our way. God is saying, be still and know I'm God. Be silent all the earth. Be silent all flesh. But we are, we are, we are seeking the Lord in our own way. And what does it do to you and I? Where is you out? When you're trying to do it your own way and not the Bible way, what is happening to you. 
You just get so tired when you pray. You get so worn out when you're seeking the Lord. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You don't know how long to wait in God's presence. You wonder, is God listening? Why? Because you're doing it your way. You are wearied in your own way. And that's what Isaiah says uh, here. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet saidest thou not there is no hope. You don't come to the conclusion that there's no hope in the way I'm doing it. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. People are going on and are not grieved by the way they're doing it. And God is saying, no, be still and know I'm God. God is saying, be quiet, be silent before me. But we are always in a hurry, always want to rush it through, and always talking and repeating ourselves in prayer and getting nowhere. Now, when you seek the presence of God with your heart, like Isaiah 26 said, when you seek the presence of the Lord, like Jeremiah 29 says, with all your heart you'll find him. And now the presence of God begins to, to descend upon you and silence settles into your heart. Abundance now fills your life. The presence of God begins to fill your life. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Suddenly, there is an overflowing abundance of God's presence, and the result is you can't even talk. Now the heart is speaking. Now the heart is praying. With my spirit have I sought thee, Isaiah 26 says. Now you're no longer seeking him because of things you know or the things you want or the things you desire. Now it begins to be the heart the prayer of the heart, the real prayer is born by the Spirit. The presence of God produces silence. And that silence is holy silence. Now you enter into a brand new arena in your life. Something so precious and so glorious begins to happen. God's presence begins to permeate your being. Now self-effort is swallowed up in the workings of God. Self-effort. It's over. The, the presence of God begins to permeate your being, and self-effort is now surrendered. Self-effort is swallowed up in the workings of God. God begins to work, and self-effort is swallowed up immediately. You no longer have to weary yourself in your own way. Now the presence of God begins to do the work because the highest spiritual attainments are the easiest to find and the easiest to reach. Oh, I want to say that again. The highest spiritual attainments are the easiest to reach because now you've entered God's presence by silent prayer and silent prayer has just become God's presence. I gotta say this again. You see, the moment you quit working, the moment you quit wearying yourself and wearing yourself out, now all you've done is with your spirit seek the Lord. Now you find him. Now his presence begins to fill your heart and mind. Now his presence produces silence because silence is the result of abundance, not lack. The presence of God does not stir you. The presence of God stills you. And now self-effort is gone. Suddenly it is swallowed up in God's working. God begins to do the work in you. Wow. Now, his presence allows you to come into silent prayer, and silent prayer becomes God's presence. I asked the man of God one day years ago, I said, now tell me about your prayer life. He said, my life is a prayer. He had, he, he had reached that place where prayer became his life, and his life became prayer. Wow. Wow. That's the way Catherine Kuhlman lived. She would walk into a place and the presence of God came right with her. It was united to Miss Kuhlman. God's presence was united to her. That's what I loved about her ministry. 
Now turn with me to Psalm 31, verse 20. I want to show you a powerful scripture. This is so awesome. I am loving this. Psalm 31, verse 20 says, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence, in the secret of thy presence. From the pride of men, thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. The presence of God is a place of protection. The presence of God is a pavilion of protection. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. From the pride of men, thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. The presence of God is a place of protection. It's a pavilion of protection. When the presence of God comes upon your soul, when the presence of God begins to still your heart and fills it with such abundance you can't even talk. When the presence of God comes on you like that, it becomes your protection. And in that presence, not only is there protection, there's also light, the absence of darkness. Matthew 17, turn with me to Matthew chapter 17. Look what happened when the presence of the Lord came in this magnificent portion of scripture it says verse 1 and after six days Jesus taketh Peter James and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun his raiment was white as the light behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elias that's Elijah talking with him then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Here again we see two things. One, the presence of God brought light, and two, in that presence, the voice of God was heard. In that presence, you will hear the voice of the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3, turn with me to Habakkuk 3. Look what the scripture says again about the presence of the Lord. Habakkuk 3, 4 says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. Wow. Where the presence of God is, there is his power. Now, let me explain something to you. The Lord said in John 14 that the Holy Spirit is with you and shall be in you. And in Acts 1.8, he said, he will come upon you. The Spirit of the Lord first is with you. Turn to John 14 quickly. That's 14.17. John 14.17. First, he is with you, and he is with you before salvation to convict you. Then the Lord said, he shall be in you. He is in you at salvation. Let me read this. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit is first with you before salvation to convict you. Then he is in you at salvation. But what? is promised in Acts 1.8. He will be upon you. There are three experiences here we read about. He's with you. He's in you. He's upon you. The moment he's within you, he'll transform you. The presence of God will cause you to be. But now he, he comes upon you and he'll cause you to do because his power causes you to do. I got to say this again. This is so powerful. The presence of God will cause you to be, but the power of God will cause you to do. Remember that. Jesus said he is with you. He is in you. Once he's in you, you will be. You'll be transformed. His presence will transform you, as I've been telling you. But now his power comes upon you. His power comes upon you for a reason and a season. His presence is an abiding presence, while his power is there for a reason 
and a season. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come and be witnesses. There's a reason for the power of God. You'll be witnesses. And there's a season. It will not be there always. The presence of God is abiding. The presence of God is forever. But the power of God comes upon you to do a job. And once that job is done, the power of God will no longer be needed. Because God's power comes for a reason and a season. God's presence is there forever. It's an abiding presence. Now, on the program tomorrow, I'll be teaching a whole lot more from our conference, and you're going to enjoy that so very much. Now, remember what I said. The presence of God will change you. It will cause you to be. God's power will cause you to do. Ye shall receive power to be witnesses. That's the reason. Tell your friends about this very special program, Manna from Heaven. I'll see you tomorrow, and a million thanks for being my partner and my friend. Bye-bye.